All right, so today I thought I would do a video that kind of explains the process of how you can purchase a home, renovate it, and sell it using little or no money down. Uh, it's a strategy that I've been doing for many, many years. I actually use a strategy uh, for even my own buy and holds, properties that I keep long term for positive cash flow. But it's really the same scenario if I were to flip the homes or if it was something that you were looking to do to flip. Um, it's a great way for you know a few reasons. One, some investors may not have all their own personal cash to purchase and renovate the property. Uh, or some people just like to diversify and use other people's money. So uh, with that being said, uh, if you look on the screen here, uh, I'm going to actually kind of break down the numbers wise. I'm actually going to show you the exact property that I did this particular uh, fix and flip with. So I'm located in Memphis, Tennessee, and that's the market that I'm in. Uh, it's a fantastic market for buy and hold positive cash flow, but it's also very popular for flipping as well. There's several companies here that uh, do fix and flips. Uh, this is a little property. If you're familiar with uh, Memphis, this house is down in the Whitehaven area of Memphis. It's close to the airport. So the numbers that I have laid out here, you can see the ARV, which stands for after repair value. Uh, this house uh, was valued at 95,000 once the renovations were completed. Uh, I purchased this property for 45,000 in as is condition. Uh, I needed around 15,000 in renovations. Uh, I went to my private lender and I asked for a $65,000 loan, which I was granted. Uh, with closing fees and loan origination fees, miscellaneous, uh, to the tune of, you know, I put down $32.50 because that's what I was allotted. Uh, I essentially closed on this property with no money out of my pocket. I actually had $16.50 left over uh, to apply to either could be a potential overage on renovation. Uh, I actually use this money for my monthly interest only payments to the private lender, but with these numbers here, it just essentially is showing you that I closed on this property with no money down, found a good enough deal where my private lender felt comfortable and the numbers worked out. Uh, I actually wanna show you what this property looked like. All right, so now this house, uh, it's a 1,200 square foot, three bedroom, two bathroom brick home. Uh, but these pictures I'm showing you are before the renovations. This is what the condition was before I even touched it. Uh, it looks a little rough on the outside. Uh, definitely needs soffit and fascia, repairs, paint, landscaping, new roof. Hardwood floors are kind of in rough condition. A little bit of garbage left over. Kitchen's a mess. Bathroom's a mess. Got a little princess uh, tag on the wall there. See the Tinkerbell sweater in there. And like I say, the, this house this house was a foreclosure. I found this property. It was actually listed on the MLS. Master bathroom right here. You can tell that's that's in pretty rough condition. So this is what the house looked like when I purchased it. So. Once I renovated this property, and I'm gonna I'm gonna move to the second slide here. Uh, I essentially sold. I essentially fixed this property up, and I sold it to an out-of-state investor. So, you know, I have to I have to put this in a position to where it's going to be attractive for an end buyer. So, if you saw on the first slide where I had the ARV or after repair value of ninety-five thousand. Uh, but I sold this property for ninety thousand. So essentially, there's a there's a little bit of equity initially into the into the property. I didn't sell it completely at full price. Uh, so we sold this for ninety thousand. It rented for eight seventy five a month uh, on a thirty year mortgage, twenty percent down with the current interest rate at the time. Their total mortgage payment, principal, interest, taxes, insurance was five hundred forty one dollars and forty four cents. 8% uh, property management fee brought it, that to $70. Gross cash flow of $263.56 with a gross return of 14%. Now, what do I mean by gross? Uh, that's just the basic numbers before you factor in anything else. And uh, I apologize for my spelling there. I, I can't spell 
there we go, I corrected it. <laughs> so this was before any additional contingencies like vacancy or repairs, but down here, I factored in 8% uh, for vacancy and 5% 5 for repairs, brings it to a net cash flow of right around $150 a month and with a net return of 8%. So they're decent numbers. They're not, they're not incredible numbers, but, but they're, they're solid. Uh, I'm going to show you pictures now of what the property looked like after I finished the renovations. This is what the end buyer was able to see. So as you can see, I put on a new 30-year architectural shingled roof, did a total tear off. We painted all outside soffit fascia trim, repaired the wood, repainted the shutters. Uh, we ripped out all the old bushes in the front and we went in with very simple, clean landscaping. Nice little tiny bushes so they can grow. A couple different angles here. Did a lot of clean out in the backyard as well. Got the new HVAC system in place. So we, re we sanded and refinished all the hardwood floors in the home. We did a full interior paint. Uh, the hallway bathroom here, we just swapped out the vanity, all the, all the tile and everything was in very good condition. We did a new vanity, mirror, light fixture, uh, really cleaned up. All new mini blinds. So in the master bathroom here, uh, we completely redid the whole shower and floor area. New tile, we did a little, uh, little pebble stone floor in there in the shower. Now in the bathroom, we did all, I'm sorry, in the kitchen, we did all new tile throughout. We painted the cabinets, new countertops. Uh, we took out that old wall oven and we made a spot right here for a slide-in range stove, did a new vent -a hood This is what fifteen thousand dollars got me on this renovation. So, so I do have a question. Go ahead, Angela. What do you got? Um, let's say, for example, you did the rehab and all that, and it just took forever for you to sell it. It didn't sell within your six month time frame on your private loan, right? Mm -hmm. What would happen in that in that situation? <sighs> Thankfully, that never happens. But if that did happen, if a, if a loan went longer, one of two things happen. I uh, a, lot of, a lot of times the private lenders will structure it so that your loan will renew. A lot of times they'll ask for uh, uh, a couple points in loan origination fees and then essentially start the loan over. Uh, some lenders will want you to put down 10% of the loan price they have in it. A lot of it really just depends. Uh, there are some private lenders out there who may want you to pay them off regardless at the end and if you can't there's a possibility that they could uh, essentially foreclose on you or, or take the property back from you it just depends on how the loan terms are set up so oh, okay so the loan is backed by the property that they get that's get correct the that's correct okay. when we get these private loans there's there's usually you know because of the relationships that we have and with the private lenders we use there's no application process. Uh, a lot of it they base on uh, just kind of like your reputation, the relationship you have, the years in business, things like that. Um, and that's why we are still able to do no money down loans, uh, essentially. You know, there's a lot of companies out there who want application processes and they want you to have 10 to 20% of your own money into the deal. Uh, that's, that's not the case for us, we're fortunate. So, I mean, that's pretty good, though, because I know when I first started, I, I was very, uh, how do you say, nervous because I didn't want to take out the loan and, like, I didn't have the, what are, what are we at, 65000 in the bank to pay it back. So I didn't want to get sued by the lender trying to pay $65,000 back. Yeah, we do not have that problem. That's good. That's a really good loan. So you see what the, the flip figures here look like for the investor who is purchasing this home. Uh, it's, it's an overall, it's a solid, solid property, solid investment. So now what do the sales profits look like? What does it look like for me as the one who purchased this home, renovated it, and now I'm flipping it? What does it look like? Well, sold the property for 90000 My loan that I had on this property was 65000 uh, I had about two months of holding cost, which a lot of times with private lenders, you have to pay 1% interest only to the private lender. This one took about two months. So there was about 1300 bucks there. 
and we had $700 or so in closing fees. So at the end of the day, we had a total profit of around 23,000. So 23,000 is a great profit, uh, especially on a, you know, kind of the purchase price range we're looking at. Uh, this is kind of an average bread and butter type deal here in Memphis. So uh, I'm sure there's other markets around the country that the same formula can work. I'm sure there's a lot of people that are doing this exact same thing all over the country. So I just wanted to bring you a video today that just kind of depicted an actual flip that I completed. And, you know, I hope that this video has been informative. Hopefully you've kind of learned how, you know, maybe someone like myself can flip properties, how you can do it yourself using private lending. If you have liked this video, please go ahead and like it, share it, subscribe to our page. Uh, we've got several other videos that uh, are very informative that talk about no money down, flipping, things like that, how to build a portfolio long term. So we hope that, uh, again, you like this video and you'll see us on the next one.